Fox 11 has your all access pass to the 2024 NFL draft. All eyes are on Detroit at its host this year's event. But Green Bay is now on the clock. Title 10 Lambeau Field take over the hosting duties a year from now. Fox 11's Ben Crummels has been in Detroit for a few days now. He joins us live. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Pete. Welcome back to downtown Detroit. I am now joined by Packers Director of Public Affairs, Aaron Popke. Good morning, Aaron. What's on the itinerary for you and all the other Packers representatives that are here in Detroit? Well, we are here to observe things firsthand. Um, we've got a core team that's been working on this for a number of years, and this will be my fourth draft that I've seen personally. And then we've got about two dozen of our colleagues at the Packers coming over, representing various departments who are all going to have a role next year when, when this is in Green Bay. So it's, it's really informative for them to see it firsthand, uh, observe, learn, take notes, talk to their colleagues, those types of things. So it's, it's a good learning trip, and uh, we're excited. What have you learned so far? Well, what, what's interesting is uh, seeing the campus. Every draft has its own unique uh, setup. So uh, it's, it's good to see how it plugs into the city in, in which it's taking place. And, and for us, it's going to be at Lambeau Field and around the stadium. Uh, so we've got an idea of that. But, but just getting ideas of, of how to integrate and uh, uh, maximize it and, and everything else that comes with it. And seeing the energy is a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to it in Green Bay. Yeah, I did talk with someone from the Detroit Lions yesterday, and, you know, they're a division rival. It sounds like you guys have a pretty good relationship. They're telling you the do's and don'ts of putting this thing on. Yes. So we, we visited with uh, other cities that have hosted. So in each year, I think the NFL gets better at, at these 10 pull events, and, and we've seen that evolution, and uh, certainly helps us sharpen our thoughts for how we're going to plan uh, with the NFL when they come to Green Bay. But really, uh, even even bigger than that, the community, the state, all the ways that, that businesses and tourism and hospitality can plug into the energy that comes with a big event like this. So that's what we're excited about. Our colleagues are here. Municipalities are here to see how to plug in. Business leaders are here to see how businesses can plug in. So I think we, we really want to maximize the opportunity in Green Bay next year. And a lot of people are here learning firsthand what those could be. And, and of course, we're going to uh, do it bigger and better next year in, in Green Bay. Yeah, you've been to a few other drafts, you said. What's unique about this one in downtown Detroit, really in, in the heart of the city? Well, I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, downtown here has got a lot that, that plugs right in. I mean, you've got the campus and down streets, you've got restaurants and shops and, and other opportunities for, for businesses and people. I, I think for the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that are going to come to Wisconsin and through Wisconsin, it's an opportunity for all of us to put out our very best welcome mat, uh, show people a good time, get them to want to come back for another visit, whether it's during football season or just come and take take all of what Wisconsin has to offer, and even businesses. You know, if we can get a few people to think, wow, Green Bay, Wisconsin, fantastic place. I'm thinking about picking up and moving somewhere. Why not here? So, I mean, the attract and retain possibilities uh, are endless. So we, shame on us, we don't maximize it on, on our end. So that's what we're working for. And before we let you go, is there anything that you saw from here that, like, boy, we got to do that next year when we're hosting in Titletown? Not yet, but uh, seeing opening, opening night here, uh, round one, and then uh, I'll be here right through Saturday to, to see everything that's going on. We've got uh, opportunities that are going on across the city with uh, 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 playground builds and, and, and other type of revitalization in different areas. So there's all kinds of great opportunities that comes with it that we'll be able to do. So we'll see that and uh, take some good notes and, and help our planning. Sounds great. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks, this morning, Aaron. There is something going on in every corner of the city, and it's all coming to our city next year. We can't wait for that. Pete, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks, Ben. Fox 11 has your all-access pass to the 2024 NFL Draft. The draft from Detroit starts in less than 12 hours. Packers fans are excited to see who the team picks over the next few days. Green Bay is now on the clock as it's the host of the 2025 event. Local businesses are thinking ahead to a year from now where the hoopla of an event this size comes to Titletown.
I'm watching it very close and a lot of my local area customers are actually in Detroit trying to figure out and come up with their game plan. Fox 11's Ben Cromos has been in Detroit for a few days now. He joins us live from Detroit and uh, Ben is a little bit chilly this morning. Pete, the severe weather index in Detroit is low, but yes, it is chilly. We got our gloves on. Photographer Don went to the store last night to add an extra layer, but it's improving. It's supposed to be better than the last two days. You've been giving us a lot of insight to the draft setup. What, what do you think? What's your biggest takeaway so far regarding this whole setup? When we arrived two days ago, I wouldn't have expected that all of this would be ready. We are right in front of the draft stage, and it is really crazy how fast things can go. Even yesterday, we were down by the NFL experience, and I'm like, is the draft tomorrow or is it in three days? <laughs> because it was just wild how much still needed to be done, but they look ready and raring to go this morning. You've been talking a lot about security and preparing for that uh, event in Detroit. So far, what kind of security have you seen? Security is very tight. They have people in blue jackets. When we were coming out of the media room just now, they were parading in about 30, 40 people. Uh, we talked with the Detroit police chief a few days ago. They have close to 3,000 officers. They're the lead agency. And that you compare that to Green Bay, and we have like 180 officers. And I said, well, how's Green Bay going to put this on next year, having gone through this? And he said, well, they're going to need to really rely on their partnerships and the collaboration with other agencies. And everybody's here. He said the FBI, ATF, undercover uh, officers. So it. It's a very high security event. Yeah, and you've talked to some people from Northeast Wisconsin too, and what have you heard from them? What's a vibe from them? What are they saying? Are they looking forward to the draft? Oh, everyone is loving just being able to check it out. Everyone is saying, you know, the footprint's a lot larger than they expected, but everyone is very confident that Green Bay can handle this. Especially I was talking with PMI's uh, Christy Haney yesterday, and she said, I think the NFL is going to love coming to Green Bay next year compared to this because there's just so much logistically with having this right in the downtown area. A lot of other cities, they put their stage in a more remote location. So they had roads blocked for four weeks leading up to this. We don't know if that'll be the case in Green Bay, but everyone seems really confident that we'll be able to pull this off next year. I thought it was kind of interesting that you found out that they didn't even know where they were going to put that stage up until six months ago. I mean, you talk about things coming together at the last minute. E even that's kind of last minute when you think about a big stage and where it's going to go. I know, isn't that insane? I really tried hard to get it out of the NFL senior director of events yesterday where the stage might be in Green Bay. I think they probably have a pretty good idea, but things really ramp up, it sounds like, once this draft is done, and especially after the Super Bowl. That's when things really take off, and you're having meetings every week and eventually daily if you're on the host committee. Yeah, you were putting your investigative skills uh, there to, to the test yesterday when you were trying to get where the stage was when it comes to Green Bay. And it's not only the draft, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff for families to do when they come to an event like this. For sure. The NFL experience is something that, uh, you know, is very family friendly. The, you can do the 40 yard dash. You can jump as high as you can. They had a Detroit like replica of Ford Field that was all lion specific that had a lot of interesting things. Ski ball. Uh, they had a Dan Campbell, like, what would you call that, like a mind reader type thing like you saw in the movie uh, Big, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was a fortune teller. It was very interesting, everything that they have. Uh, la last question, though. I know you're a, you're a huge football fan, and is, is this the first time you went to a draft, and are you so geeked out about it? I am. I, I'm a huge football fan, obviously born and raised in Green Bay. And you know it's Honolulu Blue Day in Michigan? Oh, well, what do you got? I, if you can see, I have my Packers tie on. I, uh, <laughs> you know, had to 
kind of crash their party here. Right. <laughs> I yeah. talked to all the Detroit people beforehand and wore the blue then, but it's green and gold from here on out. Very excited to be here <laughs> and to provide everybody a glimpse of what we're experiencing. Well, a lot of action going on just behind you too. Ben, thanks for all your reports and, and we'll check back with you, okay? All right, what's kind of your itinerary for down there? Uh, well, I mean, I had the opportunity yesterday to check in with the mayor, uh, Mayor Duggan, so I had a good conversation with them. Um, then we went over and, and met with uh, Detroit Fire, who has been very accommodating, uh, working really closely with Chief Knott and Assistant Chief Goplin. And then, and then we got a tour of the site with uh, our former chief, Jim Arts, who heads up NFL security um, for the draft. And so, yeah, taking in a lot to this point, but um, the, the draft obviously hasn't even started, right? Um, so looking forward to how things come together once uh, once things actually kick off. What have you learned so far? Um, I mean, a lot, I think, from, uh, from a public safety, logistical kind of security point of view. Um, the complexity of, of this event in particular is, is at a, is at a high level. I think our footprint for the draft is going to be a little bit simpler. Um, so just kind of, you know, recognizing that, but also, you know, gleaning a fair amount from how they've pulled everything together. Uh, the other thing that I think um, does translate pretty well is the fact that they have a number of events outside of the perimeter of the draft proper. Um, and so, you know, I think they have eight events or event sites outside of the uh, the draft itself. I don't think we would want to replicate that number, but I think activating some areas of downtown obviously makes a great deal of sense. And, and so figuring out how we might be able to, to do something like that um, is uh, something we'll spend, I think, a fair amount of time thinking about. You know, talking with different Detroit officials, it seems like the big thing, the big advice they have is get your message out, how you want your city portrayed on the national stage. Right. How do you want Green Bay portrayed? I mean, I think we've got a pretty great brand as is um, you know I think we're known as a, as a very hospitable community and um, we demonstrate that you know every game day obviously and, and then some so I think it's just an opportunity for us to to advertise that fact on a, on a larger stage um, and you know obviously we're, we're still the the number one city to live in in America at least you know for the next few weeks until the US News and World Report rankings come out again um, so I think we're, you know, we're able to just uh, to spread that message a little bit that, that clearly, you know, because of our, our quality of life, our public safety, um, our natural resources, Green Bay is a, a great place to live and not just to visit. And so hopefully we're going to be able to um, send that message pretty effectively. You know, I know Detroit, their police agency is lead, the lead agency for security on this. They have yeah. 3,000 officers. We right. have like 180. Yeah. Uh, how do we pull off, you know, the same size event with, you know, a smaller size department like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously not just as simple as having three game days in a row, but there is some some truth to that analogy, right? Like, this is something that we do very regularly. Um, it's a collaborative effort between Green Bay PD and the Sheriff's Department and, and Ashwaubenon, Ashwaubenon Public Safety and a, a bunch of other entities uh, with the city of Green Bay and other places. And, uh, and so I think it's just a matter of replicating that on a little bit of a grander scale over a series of days and uh, so we feel good about it. I mean, it, again, the, the complexity of this event necessitates uh, a higher level of staffing, I think, you know, downtown Detroit, high rises, um, you know, significant traffic issues and otherwise, um, you know, we're going to have some complications certainly, but, um, but I feel pretty good about um, where we stand. Uh, another thing that I picked up is we can do all this different things like brand new light poles and uh, yeah. amenities and you know that you wouldn't normally do that can last beyond the draft right do you have anything in mind that you guys plan on doing yeah I mean we are planning some pretty substantial improvements to Lake Park um, that's something that's gone through Parks Committee and Council um, but hasn't received a, a lot of recent attention but that is something that we're gonna push for uh, to make sure that those improvements are, are made in time for the draft um, you know, in terms of uh, on the private side of things, but a project that we're very invested in is the public market. Um, you know, they've made it clear that their um, their deadline for opening really is uh, the draft, and so I think it's it's been helpful to motivate um, not just the city, but a lot of other private entities um, to get some projects finished before um, we roll out the red carpet for hundreds of thousands of people. You know, something I just thought of, any chance Bay Beach is going to open early for that? Yeah, we have talked about that. Um, I, I would. I'd be shocked if we were able to open the entirety of the park, but you know, especially you know, having the Zip and Pippin open or something like that, I think would would make a lot of sense. Um, 
that's also likely to be one of the satellite sites. You know, this is all to be determined, right? But um, a good site for parking because there's there's a you know fair amount of space out there. And so uh, having people park out there and you know having the zip and pipping going, uh, if if uh, weather cooperates, I think I think would be pretty cool. The big wheel too. You got yeah. the green and yellow lights for that, right? Right. Yeah. 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 I think you know a few of the um, higher profile um, rides I think would be nice to have active. I think that's all I have. Is there anything I'm missing? I didn't ask. I don't think so. No. All right. You can grab it.